Okie dokie, I've had a bit of time to play with my PS4. Loving it. So, now that I've got it, let's give it a fair assessment. That was it. Hello guys, and welcome to The Realm, my ranty review show that I'm going to be now adding onto this channel. First off, Destiny. Destiny has a $500 million budget. That's how much it's cost to make the game, apparently. Doesn't look like $500 million's gone into it, has it? This game had a shoddy launch, and it's basically missing a ton of content. But what's there is good. Kind of. I suppose. Let's break it down, shall we? Three stages. One, gameplay. Two, main campaign. And three, end game because this game does have an end game and then I'll give you my final verdict let's go so I have to commend Destiny on one thing it has to be its gameplay that the way that it plays as a game is brilliant like unlike most FPS games where I feel like the, the characters like a lot of games on the current gen systems feel a little bit stiff like playing as Talion in Shadow of Mordor and Arno in Assassin's Creed Unity, they sort of feel like a little bit stiff and they're kind of hard to move around, almost like you're driving something. I, I don't really, I'm not really fond of that, but I can sort of get my head around it. But your character in Destiny, your Guardian, it feels like you do feel genuinely mobile. Um, and this can come into play with the different thrusters you've got, like uh, you get this upgrade early on where you get this, like, you can activate a thruster. Um, as I played as a warlock, uh, I got just a glide. So it's sort of, depending on how you use the glide, it can either ascend you for a little bit and then, like, allow you to have a bit of uptime in the air um, and just get off across a great distance. But it only lasts for so long. I noticed how, um, even with the extended glides, I noticed that it really didn't last that long. But maybe it was because I hadn't upgraded it, like there was more upgrades that I could have got. Um, my gripe with that was that I wasn't allowed to shoot my weapons in the air. Like that was a that was a thing as well. The weapons in the game feel powerful. Like unlike certain certain guns in games, like if you've watched my Far Cry Blood Dragon episode uh, series, you'll know that a lot of you'll notice that a lot of the weapons don't really have that much impact. Phaser the Phasertron, for example, feels like it's chipping away at an enemy and not doing much damage. The same with the Galleria, yes, there's a kick behind it, but it just doesn't feel like it's doing massive amounts of damage. The shotguns in this game, and especially and especially like the hand cannons, all feel like extremely powerful. And it's it's because they are powerful weapons. Like the shotguns and the hand cannons are probably my favourites. Mainly the hand cannon, just because of the stupid amount of damage they these things can do compared to say um what was a common Rifle. The Sidonia. The Sidonia was a common full auto rifle. That one felt punchy. Like, yeah, the fire rate was quite quick, but everything felt really punchy, and I kind of liked that. Now, obviously, there are a lot of things wrong with this. Uh, one of my biggest problems was, in fact, um, some of the enemies. Um, one of the enemies, the Cabal, uh, that you meet on Mars, I found them to be, I wouldn't say a, d a difficulty spike, just an unfair enemy to face you against. These things are tanky as shit. Compared to what you've been dealing with so far, there's a massive difference. And I, I I may not I may not be I may be stretching saying that that's a difficulty spike because it's uh, I honestly don't think the game was very hard. I breezed through it in a couple of hours. But the cabal were just horrible to fight. Like every engagement felt painful. It's almost as if I was sort of banking on the fact that if I had a special ammo I was gonna I was going to nuke the fuck out of the Centurions, because the Centurions can go fucking fanny themselves, the dirty bastards. I didn't like the Cabal. They were the last, they were just a shit stain on an otherwise okay game. Now the big one, the main campaign. So Destiny is split up into story missions and strikes, um, as its main form of storytelling I suppose. Uh, and the story missions progress by about each level, and most missions will get you a good level up, or maybe two. Um, 
but I never really found myself shy a level or two. Like there was never an op uh, never a point where I was like, oh shit, I have to do massive amounts of grinding, because it didn't feel like a massive grind just to get to the next level, because it was always a tiny push. It's sort of like in Final Fantasy where you've you've done a dungeon or your daily roulette and you've got a tiny smidgen of XP left, you just go hunt some monsters and then that's done. It's the same with Destiny. I never felt like I had to really grind heavily just to get that extra bit of XP I needed to, to sort of stand a chance and not have that dam damage penalty in the next mission. My problem was that the story missions themselves were boring. Like, I didn't care, I didn't give a shit what was going on. Like, from what I could gather, you were an anim a reanimated guardian uh, revived in the cosmos in old Russia, and basically, it's not really explained why you were revived, why you specifically were revived. Um, and it's, I understand that it's sort of a collective effort, like to fight the darkness, but I don't feel like my contribution was ever impacted enough. And this is sort of spoilers beyond the horizon. Our So when you get to the final mission on Mars, uh, after you've been going through this sort of, it's a slightly overarching plot where you're trying to get this gatekeeper's head, no it's a gate lord's head, uh, in order to access the Black Garden, uh, which is this place which is like the heart of the darkness or something like, I don't fucking know, what do I care, but I do have to say, like when I went to, when I went to some of these areas, like these patrol zones, they looked incredible. Like, some of the skyboxes were the best I'd ever seen. Like, this is a next-gen game, and it wants you to know that. Like, yeah, it's sort of a bit boring at times, but the Black Garden was the the big one for me. Like, out of all of the all of the skyboxes and shit I'd seen in the game, the Black, the Black Garden just absolutely sold me. I was like, okay, that is incredible. Like, if, it, if there were more things like the Black Garden, I would have I would have loved the game more, but it's the fact that the final boss. Well, we're gonna call him the final boss because he's in, he's the last he's the last well three enemies in the last room of the Black Garden mission, so that must constitute him as a final boss. It felt really underwhelming. That's my problem. It didn't feel like a final boss. It should have been a testament to the skills I learned at the time, but it was just a matter of like hiding behind cover and shooting the bastard didn't feel like everything, like, I'd ascended higher as a guardian or something like that. I didn't feel like I'd grown as a character, which is kind of a big problem. It's a shame, really, this game, like, I'm pretty sure that there is a lot missing, but as of, as of recording, The Dark Below has been released, but I'm not sure if that's actually got any more storytelling in it, because I haven't checked it out, because I don't want to check it out, because this game is disappointed me to be honest and well yeah being an MMO player I have to make a subject matter for this end game now the, now destiny has harped on about its end, end game like an angel with Parkinson's disease because apparently it's really good um, I have not like I stopped sort of playing after the final mission and did a couple of patrol missions but that was about it I Basically, what happens is once you hit the level cap, level 20, you uh, can still fill your XP bar, but instead you you get motes of light when you complete when you fill up the XP bar, uh, and this is what you do when you um, when you complete bounties and basically instead of building up your XP bar, you get motes of light, which you can then use to get uh, certain things from the speaker, um, who's voiced by Bill Nye. Um, it's all right, I suppose. But every time I've gone to look at the speaker's stuff, it's never really anything substantial that I would, like, yes, I want to strive to get that. Like, I'm going to do a comparison to one of my MMOs. Um, every currency has, um, has a purpose. Like, for example, Elegant Tomestones of Soldiery, for example, in Final Fantasy, get you your item level 100 gear, as well as unidentified soldiery weapons. That's a means of getting a decent enough item level to take on the second coil of Bahamut. And this currency, this mo these modes of light, from what I've seen, that's the only usage for them. I may be wrong, don't quote me on that, but I may be horribly wrong in that. And they might actually be used to get exotic weapons or something like that. I I'm sure they are. 
but I've just not gotten that, I've just not touched the end game because I don't like the look of it. Like, yeah, certain parts of Final Fantasy's end game are a grind, and I mean, the relic weapons are a massive testament to that, but it just doesn't feel like doing these things are substantial. And then we get onto the Crypt Arc. The Crypt Arc is a big point of controversy with the game, because you get these things called engrams. Now, engrams are sort of d like gear you have to transmog. Like it's you have to I, you have to desynth or declassify. Um, you have to sort of desynthesize it to, in order to get a piece of armor. Well, it's kind of specified as to what it is because it's sort of a faded image of a certain type of item. So it could be a weapon, it could be an armor piece, it could be fuck I don't know a type of sparrow or something. Um, but my problem is that it doesn't, it's a random number generator, and it's a random number generator of the worst kind of order, because it's such a broad thing. Like, each engram, there's decrypt, there's encrypted, decoherent, legendary, and ex- Oh, excuse me. Encrypted, decoherent, legendary, and exotic. Now the problem is that each of those engrams can net you something below what you expected. Except for the exotics, as far as I'm aware. I've, I've heard that the exotics just give you a exotic weapon, as they're for the graces. But, God, if it doesn't make it really hard, if you're farming these engrams, <coughs> it can be really crippling just to get billions of legendaries and then loads of legendaries, and then just get a bunch of blues. Like, that's not the point. You need the legendaries in order to get light levels, which is, like, basically the end game levels. And that's not good. You can't do that. Like, yes, certain factors of Final Fantasy are RNG. Like, the Atma drops and um, the, the new Ascension drops for items for your Ascended weapons. Those are RNG of the worst kind of order, but Square Enix have fixed it. Like, it's a specific, you are going, if you stay in that area, you are going to get that Atma. But with this, there is no telling what you could get. You could get, you could have a decoherent engram for a type of scout rifle, for example, or like a primary, primary weapon engram. And unless it's like specified as a hand cannon, God knows what you could get with that engram. God even fucking knows. And it's a really crippling point. And if it isn't fixed, it could cause some massive problems. I know. And, oh, God. That's not how RNGs work. RNGs are supposed to put a spin on factors that really, like, there's def definitive factors. Like, this can happen, this can happen, and this can happen. But it's a question of which will happen. It shouldn't be you have all these options and it could be absolutely any of them. If you spread out a random number generator over too many different variables, it just becomes unfair. And it can be a massive turn off for, for someone who plays MMOs like myself. And, oh, I don't know. It's So bad. can I rate Destiny as a good game? It's a good game in there somewhere, but it's just, it doesn't want to show itself. Bungie are good at making single player adventures. They're good at making Halo. They are good at making all of those kinds of games. And I'll admit, Halo 4 is good. Halo 4 is a great game, even though it wasn't made by Bungie. It still has that charm though. But my problem with Destiny is that it's trying to be too many things at once. And that ultimately is its downfall. It needs, I would say that Bungie needs to take some notes from the big boys. Square Enix have made two MMOs. World of Warcraft has been going on for 10 years. They need to learn from them. They're the experts. I wouldn't learn from Final Fantasy XI because some of those things are very... You know, that's besides the point. Destiny is an alright game. If, you're fi if you can find it really cheap, like £20 on Amazon, go for it. Absolutely go for it. I mean, it's a great little time sink, sink if you're into the grind. But I'm not. I'm having trouble with my fucking animus, for God's sake, on Final Fantasy, and that's as grindy as it gets. Well, Nexus is as grindy as it gets, but that's what's something important. I would give this a solid 6 out of 10, if I had to. Anyway, 
Thanks very much for watching the realm. I'll see you guys for my next review. See you then.